Shalom, brother. Uh, this is part two, continuation of Uncle Tom. So, a lot of people should know. If you don't know, you're going to know. Uncle Tom, that phrase came from Harriet Breacher Stowe, right? She's most famously known for the Uncle Tom cabins. This is a picture of her. And you see here at the bottom when it's talking about her novels. Um, it says that she depicted the harsh conditions experienced by enslaved African Americans. And she was a Christian. Um, she believed that it was against the Bible. She had a few scriptures about that as well. This guy here, this is the actual real Uncle Tom, who the books were based on, Josiah Henson. Now, you guys could obviously just go to YouTube and you can um, watch the videos to learn more about him. What I thought was very interesting was his story, because when you listen to the story or if you read the story... You'll see that it took numerous events for him to wake up and realize that he had to do something. The first incident that he experienced was his mother was being raped. And keep in mind, uh, during this particular time period, uh, slavery was going on. So his, his parents were slaves. He was a slave. His mother was being raped in the process of being raped. And Josiah's father heard what was going on. So he ran, I think he grabbed the man at that time, you know, you're not allowed to touch the, you know, the white man. So long story short, he was sold. And I think they mentioned he might've got his ear cut off or something too, but either way his father got, so his father was sold. So he lost his father. Then, Later on in life, um, he became very loyal to his slave master, and his slave master took him to some um, gambling location, and they got into a, a fight, and then he helped his slave master in a brawl, and then that guy came um, looking for Josiah and had a few slaves. The slaves, they grabbed Josiah, uh, and I think they said they damaged his shoulders so bad that he couldn't really lift him up. Um, another incident they said was he found out that he could get freedom if he paid a certain amount of money. So Josiah gave the slave master a certain, he didn't give him all the money, but he gave him a certain amount of money. Uh, and the slave master raised the price. Uh, so basically he just got swindled out of his money. Then there was another situation where um, Josiah, slave master, informed Josiah to take his his brother, the brother of the slave master, to a certain location to go view some plantations or something. And Josiah, along with a bunch of slaves, they passed the area where there was no slavery. And he had the opportunity to make a run for it, and he did not. So just over various situations, um, he was basically just getting screwed over and over and over. And it took Josiah a minute to wake up and realize he has to do something. So it got to the point where he just decided to run away. He ran away and I think he fled to Canada. Now, while in Canada, he did some good things. Uh, let's see. I think I found something here. See, so, uh, see, in 1930, in, excuse me, in 1830, the Henson family fled to Canada, receiving shelter and support at safe houses of, along the Underground Railroad. So once they were established in Canada, Henson 
uh, return to the United States. He led other runaway slaves on the long uh, track to freedom along the Underground Railroad. It was reported that he helped some 200 slaves. Um, and I think they had a school or something as well. I think they established some school. And he, he did some other things as well. But I know, uh, going back to Harriet Breacher Stowe, um, because her books, they were based on Josiah uh, Henson's life, right? And slavery and a lot of different things. So he became like a, like a, like a public speaker. So he went, and I believe, to different places. Um, and he spoke. I know he met... Uh, let me see. I think it's somebody said it in here. I think he met. Uh, one second, guys. Um, I think he met the queen. Let's see. Maybe it's in here. Um. I believe he met Queen Victoria later on in his life. But either way, um, the point of me bringing this out is just so you guys can get an understanding. Yes, the things that I mentioned about Josiah at the beginning of the story, him helping his slave master, he got his shoulders broke. Um, he got his money taken from him. Um, it took him a minute to realize certain things, right? It says the wicked, this is Psalms, right? 58.3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Here's another one. Psalms 55.21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Ecclesiasticus 12.10, never trust thy enemy, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. So going back to the whole Uncle Tom thing, Josiah, what he did not realize, I don't need, what Josiah didn't realize was that his slave masters were his enemy. He was in captivity. No matter how nice they were to him, they were still his enemy. Had Josiah realized that at an early, if he realized that in the very beginning, he could have went, he could have bypassed all the other things. Now, I do understand that at his particular time knows what his circumstances. So it's easy for me or someone to sit up here and say he should have did this and he should have did that. But those were the circumstances at that particular time. He was a slave. You understand what I'm saying? That was life. Everyone was a slave. Now, yes, there were people who fled and eventually he did fled, but it took him quite some time to realize this. We're talking... Two messed up shoulders, um, money being taken, regretting um, running away, and some other things as well. To realize, hey, I got to get me and my family out of here. So if you guys get the opportunity, I implore you guys to... Check this out on YouTube. The Real Uncle Tom, Josiah Henson. You know? Um, one of the things I liked in the in the story that they told about jo jo Josiah Henson was that when he fled, he took him and his family. And, and this was very honorable. They were on the run. And he actually had to go to... Um, like a 
a lake or something or a pond and find water for his family. So he, you know, they were hiding out. So it wasn't like they could just all just go and get the water, you know? So he had his family hide in a certain location and he snuck out and tried to put the water in his hat, but his hat had a hole in it. And so the water would drip out. So basically he took his shoes and he filled them up with water and he had his kids and his wife drank out the shoes so they could have water so they could stay hydrated. And then there was another time where they stopped and they got something to eat, you know. So, you know, they had to do different things to survive. So it's very honorable. So, I mean, it's easy for us to look at what Uncle Tom, excuse me, Uncle Tom, what Josiah Henson did. Um, and then you look at the book, right, because the book was portraying Josiah Henson, right? Um, but at the same time, you have to look at the things that are, the things that are happening. What's the circumstance? What's the situation, right? Not everyone is going to make those decisions at that particular time that seem beneficial because everything is different, right? You know, at that time they were slaves, you know, he had a family, he, you know, he grew up and, you know, his father was taken from him just for trying to protect his wife. You know, I think he said his father got his ear cut off. I'm pretty sure people were getting whipped and beaten and foots chopped off and, you know, fled, you know, uh, probably fed to the dogs. I mean, all type of different things, right? So the point of me, you know, just finishing this video out, um, I was going to play it and kind of chime in, but I keep getting copyright um, claims. So, but, so I didn't do it, but anyway, I just want you guys to get a, a real understanding about the real uncle Tom. Like I said, and you guys could always go. That's why I have it here on the screen. You can just go to YouTube and you can just really get an idea about the real uncle Tom, because when we think of uncle Tom, the first picture that comes to mind is this picture. That's what we think of. So. The real Uncle Tom, as in Josiah Henson, who he, you know, that's who the Uncle Tom was portraying, Josiah Henson, his life, what he went through, right? Nobody's perfect to be human is to be flawed. We're always going to make mistakes. We're not going to do things right. But going back to what I initially told you guys, being a Uncle Tom, um, nowadays is... But more so people, you know, more so it's like an opinion by people because you have a, a difference of an opinion. That's not an Uncle Tom. That is not an Uncle Tom, right? If we're going to say somebody's an Uncle Tom, you're looking at somebody as in kind of what he did at the beginning, right? That was, I guess you could say, kind of Uncle Tom-ish, right? He had the opportunity to leave, but he didn't leave. But then there was a you know, there was a lot, of, there was a, there's a thought process behind that if he left, right? He felt some type of allegiance to his slave master. So that's why he didn't leave, which they stated in this uh, little YouTube video. But that's, that's just how he felt, right? He got his shoulders broke because, you know, I, he really felt in his heart probably that this was, you know, they were friends, they were family, you know, but it took him some time to realize that that wasn't the case. They were enemies, and don't and there's no mistake about it. They were enemies. This is chattel slavery. You're my slave. You're my property. You do what I tell you to do. If not, I'll sell you. I'll beat you. Or worse, I'll kill you. It, it's that simple, and it goes on because you just you're just a number. You're just a, a item that can be replaced. That was the the thought process. So you guys get a chance. You guys check out The Real Uncle Tom. Again, here it's here on YouTube. Uh, you can get more information or go, I think it's it's pretty long. It's, I think it's about 50 minutes, but it'll um, break down a lot of things that you may not know or things you may know and you might learn, you might get a... Um, I don't know. It might help you remember some things that you may have forgotten. But, you know, again, like just getting an understanding about Uncle Tom. 
So next time you're out and about and you hear somebody say, call somebody Uncle Tom, don't call them Uncle Tom because they believe something is different from you. You want to use the word, use the word correct, right? Why is the person Uncle Tom? You know, now if they're putting, if they're putting their nation behind another nation, sure, by all means, call them Uncle Tom. If they have no self-respect on who they are, sure, call them Uncle Tom. <laughs> but if a person says, oh man, I believe in the Democrats over Republicans, that's not Uncle Tom. Hey man, we're not going to support this. And if you do it, you're Uncle Tom. No, see, get the, get the understanding. Don't just start calling people names because they have a difference of opinion. But with that, family, I'm going to say one love, shalom, all praise and most high. You guys take care. Love you, brother.